This presentation is on a weighted least square regression. NIST defines the weighted least square regression as for each term an additional weight is given which determines how much influence it has on the final result. It can be used with both linear or nonlinear functions. According to NIST, one of the common assumptions in the construction of models is that each data point provides equal precise information in determining the final results. This assumption is made for both linear and nonlinear least squares regressions. In other words, it is assumed that the error is constant over all data points. This assumption is not correct in every modeling application. According to NIST, in a weighted model, less weight is given to the less precise measurements and more weight is given to more precise measurements. The most precise parameter estimates are possible using weights that are inversely proportional to the variance of data points. The term variance is explained in the next slide. 8000C describes variance as the difference between observed instrument response for a calibration standard and the predicted or calculated response for that calibration standard. 8000C continues that Weighing the sum of the squares of the differences facilitates the data points to fit better to a linear model. The decision as to when to use weighted or unweighted regression is based on the error structure of the calibration. If error is proportional to concentration or amount, a weighted regression should be used. The simplest form of weighted regression is RSD of calibration or response factors. If the physics of the measurement is understood, or if a history has shown that a weighted or unweighted regression should be used, any change from weighted to unweighted and vice versa should be scrutinized and understood. For example, it is known that measurements of temperature with a the thermometer have a constant error structure, whereas it is known that measurements by GC with detectors like FPD, FID, NPD and other conventional GC detectors, including MS, have proportional error structure. Therefore, it would be appropriate to use an unweighted regression for temperature and weighted regression for measurements by GC with conventional detectors and MS. The general form of the sum of the squares of the differences containing the weighting factor is shown in this slide. According to 8000C, the math used in unweighted least square regression has a tendency to favor numbers of large value over numbers of smaller value. Therefore, the regression curves that are generated will tend to fit points that are at the upper calibration levels better than those points at the lower calibration levels. To compensate for this favoring numbers of large value over numbers of smaller value, a weighting factor which reduces this tendency can be used. Examples of weighting factors which can place more emphasis on numbers of smaller value are given in this slide. According to 8000C, there are numerous other ways to define weighting factors. In the Chromelian software manual, the different types of weighting are illustrated with the effect they have on the calibration data points. They are illustrated in this and the next slide. Some more weighting factors that can be used are illustrated in this slide. Care must be taken in giving weights. They must be thoroughly analyzed before making a decision. The disadvantages slide of this presentation warns what to watch for. The advantages according to NIST are 1. The weighted least squares is an efficient method that makes good use of small data sets. 2. The main advantage that weighted least squares enjoys over other methods is the ability to handle regression situations in which the data points are of varying quality. 
According to NIST, the biggest disadvantage of weighted least squares is probably the fact that the theory behind this method is based on the assumption that the weights given are known exactly. The exact weights are almost never known in real applications, so estimated weights must be used instead. The small variations in the weights due to the estimation do not often affect a regression analysis or its interpretation. However, NIST cautions that when the weights are estimated from small numbers of replicated observations, the results can be very badly or unpredictably affected. In simpler terms, this is saying that when the variables are estimated using only a few observations, the results can be very badly affected since the weights given are based on the variable values. The variables, as explained in an earlier slide, is the difference between the predicted and calculated responses. It is important to remain aware of this potential problem and to only use weighted least squares when the weights can be estimated precisely relative to one another. NIST cautions that weighted least squares regression is also sensitive to the effects of outliers. If the outliers are not investigated and dealt with appropriately, they will likely have a negative impact on the final results. NIST concludes by saying that if a weighted least square regression actually increases the influence of an outlier, the results of the analysis may be far inferior to an unweighted least square analysis. In this ADHS example, an unweighted linear calibration model is compared with the same data using a weighted linear calibration model. In this case, the linear unweighted calibration curve actually gives a better R square value than the weighted curve. In the unweighted curve, the higher linear curve points have more weight and are overwhelming to some extent the effects of the lower calibration point that is askew. In the weighted calibration curve, the lowest askew point has more weight and is having a more overall effect on the curve. This is definitely not always the case. Analysts will need to check on an individual compound basis to see if weighting the curve can help or hurt the accuracy of the curve's resulting quantitation with samples.